letter.
Hello and good afternoon, everybody. I understand we have a bit of uh, technological challenges, but you can hear me, but it seems I can't hear you. So I don't know how, whether you can send me a signal that I may begin. Okay, all right. I'll just go on then in that case. Ask Okay, let me start by acknowledging the presence in our midst of the chairman of the Ocean and Blue Economy Office, General Samson Mwatete, uh, senior government officers present, captains of industry and members of the Association of Maritime Professionals, Kenya, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. A very good afternoon to all of you uh, from COP26. Uh, let me start by saying how grateful I am to you for having found it, found me worthy to invite to make remarks on this very memorable event of launch, launching the Association of Maritime Professionals, Kenya. And I'm also pleased to note that the youth or the young people, and especially students, have embraced our maritime sector with a lot of curiosity and excitement. Uh, this is very encouraging for me uh, to see professionals reorganizing themselves in unison and common goals and purpose. And this is the future we want for our maritime sector. So ladies and gentlemen, let me say that I'm encouraged by the objectives of your association. I've looked at them. And I believe that this platform, if properly utilized, has a lot of potential to assist us as the public sector and policymakers uh, in, and all of us working together jointly to provide expert views on the sector, but most important, to build agile and responsible young officers in this generation to serve the sector, not just today, but in years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's in, you know, we've, we are having this meeting and you're having the launch. I don't know whether you planned it, but it's only one day uh, that after the COP26 had what we called an Ocean's Day. And we were reminded very much in the side event that we had that the oceans are a foundation for much of the world's economy by promoting social economic, social development through its ecosystem, goods and services, regulating climate change and general life sustenance. The African Union has reminded us of this very fact and by developing several policy frameworks to promote maritime trade and development in the continent. And we all know about the African Maritime Transport Charter, the AIMS Strategy 2050, and the African Union 2063 Agenda uh, 2030 on Sustainable Development. And all these policy documents Yes, I can't hear. What do I do now? 
Hmm? Oh, they can't hear. Wow. <coughs> It's always a problem. Eh? Mm, they didn't do a run. Can you hear me now? Tell me if you can hear me. Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Like I was saying, huh? okay. Like I was saying, the, the African Union has sent, set us on our path by providing us with very key policy documents in order to guide us in developing and interacting with the maritime sector, which nowadays we commonly refer to as the blue economy. And the policy documents are aimed at maximizing regional and international trade through partnership and cooperation. As we are aware, the African blue economy is a concept that covers not just fisheries, aquaculture, but also tourism, transport, shipbuilding and repair, shipping, bioprospecting, energy, and seabed mining, and so many other related activities. And we are saying that uh, also the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa has also done a roadmap for the blue economy and calls upon us as African countries, above all, to explore oceanic seabeds for offshore oil and gas. But all of those activities that I have mentioned clearly present a critical challenge for all of us, namely capacity building and a consideration of the fact that the most advanced knowledge and technology design system of global excellence have made uh, some of these things uh, accessible to us. For example, offshore energy exploration and exploitation, fisheries and aquaculture, and all these possibilities clearly make us aware that we need as a country and as a continent to put ourselves on the global arena of fierce competition with regard to capacity building. However, the global wisdom of mankind is never to despair. And in this, we have to take cognizance of the great advantages we have in playing and becoming are competent to play in these international arenas, such as we have the world's highest population of talented young people, like many of you in this forum. We also have a high number of green grass institutional infrastructure, which is which are some of the greatest competitive edge in the world arena. And I could mention here the MPESA in which Kenya was the lead. And most important, we have a shared clear common will to make Africa the locomotive of global growth and development in this century and beyond. So ladies and gentlemen, what do we do? I want to say that in realizing the potential of our country's blue economy, the maritime sector and the fisheries sector have been identified as pillars to our country's national economic growth. And this has been recognized as one of the strongest pillars in Vision 2030. And in this earnest attempt, the government has further identified capacity building for the sector as a critical component and an enabler of the blue economy development. And as we are aware in this respect, the Bandari Maritime Academy has been identified as the national center of excellence for skills development in the blue economy and will be expected to generate not less than 10,000 world-class seafarers annually, among other skills. 
And we need to also note that uh, plans are underway to reorganize and improve the maritime sector in line with the international obligations. As you are aware, the ICS also, today we are having, uh, I'm speaking to you al alongside uh, a major event organized by the ICS in which I've just finished speaking. And I take cognizance and which I told the forum that Kenya hosts a very strong chapter which has given us world renowned uh, professionals who, who are award winners. And all these measures are geared towards giving us the kind of capacity that we need to play in this international arena in, in this time and space. So I want to say that uh, we are all geared towards uh, making this sector work for us. And we are encouraged by this organization that young people are showing us the way and also uh, coming together in order, to, in order to challenge us as policymakers, as government, to live a better tomorrow for them and to introduce, uh, to improve the sector for you. And we want to say that we are up to challenge. And that is why one of the recent activities we have done as government is adopt three very key uh, instruments of the IMO uh, and ILO in order to make, uh, to make it easier uh, for both the workers as they work, as they look for jobs, uh, to make Kenya, let me say Kenya more competitive as a maritime labor supply nation, which means also preparing the pathway for, for the young people as they qualify where they will work. And I want to cite here the amendments to the Maritime Labor Convention. This is very key in giving us a level playing field in the global environment of work. And most important uh, for fisher folk or for people interested in the fishery department, now Bandari will be able uh, to issue certificates for STCWF. And most important is the recent gazettement also of the Maritime Wages Council. And we are looking forward to rolling it out in order to make Kenyans as competitive as possible as we join in big numbers as we anticipate to do uh, the maritime labor pool. We have no doubt as government that with these efforts in revitalizing our institutions within the blue economy sector, the country will generate wealth for the country and many quality jobs for the youth. We look forward to support from the private sector as we walk this path and also the maritime education and training institutions in order to make our national objectives, which I have outlined a few of them, a reality. Once again, let me thank you and wish you a very successful launch as I look forward to having collaboration and a partner in the AMP Kenya. Uh, in this journey as we walk to making it better for all of us. With that, I thank you and wish you a very, very successful launch. I would have loved to be there to see, to be part of that colorful occasion that I'm observing from the screen, but I know we'll have time to catch up in your next engagements. Thank you so much and congratulations to all the organizers, your interim chairman and all the officials of this great institution. We are looking forward to working with you to professionalizing uh, the, the maritime sector once again and having a worthy partner to work with us as government. Thank you very much.
and here with us to deliver the remarks on behalf of the DG, the Kenya Maritime Authority, is Mr. Omingo. And I'll straight away welcome him to take the podium. Karib sana, Mr. Omingo. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, good, af good afternoon, uh, the General, the Chair of uh, Tobeo, the Blue Economy Office, the Director General Kenya Coast Guard, the other CEOs who are here, Chairman, Chairman, uh, my Chairman, Mr. Geoffrey Mwango, Chairman of Bandari, the Vice Chancellor Tum, and uh, important uh, professionals and dignitaries within this setup. I'm speaking here on behalf of the Director General, Robert Joy, who could not be with you here, but we exchanged before I came here. So he told me a few words to share with you. So I'll be speaking, not necessarily in the same, same way he gave them to me, but we went br briefly through a number of things. First of all, as Kenya Maritime Authority, we are highly pleased to be associated with this development. As the PS had earlier said, the, the framework for exploring what is there in the blue economy or the maritime sector. From the continent, continent perspective, they gave us the African Integrated Maritime Strategy, a framework that uh, each member state of the African continent had a very clear direction on what to take, what to do. And uh, we are excited because having been in this industry since 1991 and uh, having seen very little of what could be happening, from that continental perspective, then we came to the Blue Economy Conference, the, the, the inaugural National Maritime Conference and the conversations, plus the policy support that we are getting from the, from the, the third medium term plan on the Kenya Vision 2030 that has now fully captured the blue economy issues, ideas that we need to, to do from the government perspective. Now, from the point of Kenya Maritime Authority as the coordinator regulator of the maritime sector, we have also been encouraged by the support that we have received from the government in initiating the platform to build the people like the professionals who are in this room in terms of the curriculum development, in terms of the vetting the maritime training institutions, ensuring that we meet those quality standards, like Captain Hamisi had, uh, Kamisi had mentioned, we had to be in the whitelist. So working on the regulatory framework and the structures needed to train professionals in the maritime sector, we've done a lot to make sure that that one is, 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 is taking place. So as we speak now, we have curriculum from the lower levels up to university levels that can be able to build the kind of capacity that we've been missing in this industry. Not only that, we have worked to make sure that the logistics, the people who support the seafarers also have very good training programs. We did the initial ones. Now we have worked with the Tiveta to make them the competency based so that we are able to be in line with the training policy that this country has for us. In addition to that, Kenya Maritime Authority has, uh, has availed the funding, the funding process through the Higher Education Loans Board, just to make sure that uh, our, our citizens who are interested in these areas and uh, are, are, are uh, handicapped in terms of the support are able to access this support through help. So this funding structure will be improved with the time being. And given that the industry has had very little support for a very long period of time, it needs affirmative action. So in the name of Kenya Maritime Authority plus the resources which are available and the policy support that we are getting, we want to assure you that when we call the marine pilots will not be having only a handful starting from there. We'll be calling various categories of uh, pilots, the nautical engineers, we'll be calling the, the, the marine engineers, plus other areas within this blue economy space. Just to let you know how much of what we are missing in terms of the professionals, the blue economy, if you count the specific professions, they come to around 87. So we have 87 different trainees to be trained by our training institutions to be able to fit all the 15 or so clusters within the blue economy space. So if you look at that and the level of integration that we have under the development, then you realize that uh, 
we are, this is a virgin land that we can really build and make it grow. Because we were told that we just speak a few words. The critical one that I want to say through the Tobeo office, we've, we've come to learn, it's a painful lesson, that when we work in the various silos, it doesn't work. What you are now calling a maritime nation has got an integrated platform of bringing all the agencies and people to work together to be able to synergize and make the best use of the resources, bring the academia, bring the traders, the, the professional, the, the business people in the industry, plus the government agencies, so that we can be able to identify the key areas that we work on. To this front, I want to say that we have started as Kenya Maritime Authority with the Victoria, Lake Victoria region. We have had meetings with the Turkana, with the Noreb, we started with the El Reb. We are meeting with Jumeirah County. At Victoria region, two weeks ago, we launched what we are calling multi-agency action plan. In which, Mr. Chairman, we put you right at the center there. We missed you because you were caught up in another meeting here in Mombasa, but we had 21 CEOs of all the agencies dealing with the blue economy issues, attending the function and assigning to be committed to be able to do something. So then we move the conversation from conferences and talkings to into action. And we anticipate to see that one happening in Turkana, all the inland waters, but also in the coast. We are working with Jumeya County to make sure that even the Go Blue initiatives, which is ongoing and is doing a lot of good things, they bring in the agencies, they bring in the business people, they bring in the academia, so that together, as we look forward to having what we are calling the integrated maritime policy within our country, to make all the issues very clear for all of us, in our journey to becoming a maritime nation. So we just want to urge you for a lot of support with this initiative. The Office of the Blue Economy, headed by the General, I believe is, is aware of this and uh, they are working so that at particular given time, starting from the Lake region, we just want to see from the areas that we have identified, can we come up with a baseline of what they have done, the various agencies. And then from that baseline, can we now start moving, meeting regularly on a quarterly basis, all the agencies, the business community, the academia, just to see to what extent are we dealing with these blue economy issues. So if you move in that particular direction, I'm sure we are going to move far. We are going to have more professionals in these rooms. We are going to have more activities so that we see the vibrancy that we have aspired in the maritime sector coming to be alive and working. And I want to assure you, this is a conversation we had with the Director General. So I want to assure you on his behalf that the authority is ready, is willing, and uh, is very pleased to have professionals having this kind of a conversation. Even the development of those monitoring and evaluation frameworks, the memorandum of collaboration, we have benefited from the academia and the industry practitioners. And we want to see this one happening at the coast and all the other inland waters. So that together as a country, we stop talking, but start acting. And the Kenya Maritime Authority is there with you to support and see that we are able to move in this direction. I want to thank you, thank you so much. And I want to commend the initiative done by the professionals to bring us together so that we can be able to speak and find out how best we can move our country forward within the maritime space. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Omingo for those very encouraging remarks. And from your remarks, uh, you pointed out that there are over 80 different types or different areas of specializations in the blue economy. And this is precisely one of the objectives of this association because it's bringing together, it's a forum that brings together the seagoing professionals and the show-based professionals all together on a common platform to address some of the challenges that need to be addressed to take this country's blue economy uh, forward and achieve our blue economy ambitions as a nation. Thank you so much for those very enlightening remarks. Um, I'll take the opportunity now to welcome Captain Moses Modama to make a few remarks on behalf of the Kenya Post Authority Managing Director. Karibu, Captain. Asante sana, uh, uh, Mr. President. Uh, guest of honor, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to give to read the uh, uh, managing director's uh, 
Kenya Ports Authority uh, speech. Uh, he could not be with us. He had a prior engagement and uh, he would have wished to be here. First of all, as a, as a, as a mariner, uh, I'm really happy to be here to see the launch of the Marine Practitioners Association of Kenya. Uh, it has been a, a long dream in waiting. Uh, it has taken us a lot of effort to come up with the forum. So um, I'm really happy to be with you today to see the launch of this uh, association. Uh, I quote the words of uh, Acting Managing Director, KPA. I am pleased to join this distinguished gathering of uh, maritime professionals to mark the formal introduction of the Association of Maritime Practitioners in Kenya. Let me begin by conveying my heartfelt congratulations to all of you for actualizing this noble initiative, which was long overdue. As you are all aware, maritime industry is a specialized hands-stone industry that calls for its professionals to achieve and maintain very high level standards. From sailing and navigating treacherous and turbulent waters in the deep seas to ensuring smooth sailing and quick fixes whenever a problem arises, marine professionals play a crucial role in advancing maritime transport and ensuring the safety of cargo, uh, passengers, environment. The formation of this association couldn't have come at a more opportune moment as the industry awakens to new, more complex challenges that require 21st century solutions. These challenges can not be tackled by individuals, but require team efforts. By pulling together as a society, this becomes the first step in, in identifying an, the individual weakness whose possible solution lies in the strength of the synergy. The Association of Maritime Practitioners will also provide a base for sharing information and experiences, especially ideas on how to remain ahead of the game by utilizing emerging technologies. I am aware that through this association, which brings together naval officers, marine pilots, and marine engineers, seafarers, coast guards, among others, a platform will be created to enable the members to leverage on our synergies to engage particularly on tactics that will improve our industry going forward. This association will also ensure that young professionals learn new skills from those who have amassed wealth of experience from years of service. Ladies and gentlemen, having given our perspective on the association, allow me to share update on the implementation of various infrastructural port development projects. The ongoing projects at our port facilities are meant to advance our development agenda as we seek to grow our market share in the industry. Some of the notable projects include the construction of phase two of the second container terminal, which will increase capacity at the port of Mombasa with an additional 450,000 TU annually. The relocation of a Kipevu oil terminal, whose construction of the, uh, the construction of the modern uh, oil terminal will significantly increase the capacity of the port of Mombasa to handle petroleum products. The KOT will have four baths capable of discharging four vessels at once, thereby increasing efficiency at the port. Construction of the Doki attack jetty, uh, the jetty, which is a crucial facility for the repair and the maintenance of marine craft, this jetty will ensure the availability of marine craft and seagoing vessels, which provide crucial services to ships that call at Mombasa. Another important facility that KP has invested is the construction of the cruise ship terminal, expected to grow the tourism industry in the country. The ultra-modern facility will complement tourism by diversifying the products on the on, the, on, on offer and making Kenya an attractive destination to both local and international tourists. The recent operationalization of the port of Lamu marks a major milestone in the growth and expansion of the port. 
and shipping industry in the country. The modern facility, which is already receiving vessels, provides massive opportunities in terms of the formation of new transport corridor that comes with an expanded market. You realize that all of us have the water resource that we utilize on a day-to-day -day basis, basis, and therefore the need to safeguard and ensure stability, sustainability, sorry. KPA is spearheading the construction of Shimoni fish port, which will be the premier fishing port in, in the country. Our focus is to grow the industry through value addition by ensuring that fish processing, packaging, even exporting becomes a reality. Through the blue economy, that, is still, that still remains largely untapped. Opportunities abound, and it is up to us to unlock the potential, the potential and figure out how we can tap into, into this resource. Let us collaborate and increase the partnership, be it in training, collaboration, drills, or joint operations. Ladies and gentlemen, as I wind up, I wish to reiterate KPA commitment to the development and sustenance of this association. We remain available to offer our support that will ensure service standards in our industry improve further and efficiency and safety is upheld. Finally, let me recognize the efforts of the organizers of this successful event that has necessitated the coming together of maritime experts who would otherwise be spending at, uh, their Saturday afternoon with their loved ones back at home. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Captain Moses Murama, the head of Marine Operations, Kenya Ports Authority, for delivering the MDs, uh, the Kenya Ports Authority MDs remarks this afternoon. I take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Juvenile Shiundu, board chairperson, Kenya National Shipping Line. Mr. Shiundu packs a long and sterling work experience at the IMO, which has taken him to all corners of the world, tackling various maritime challenges and projects. He has supported various programs of the MPK this far, and we're very honored to have him here with us this afternoon. Mr. Shiundu, please take the podium, sir. Uh, General Retired Samson Matete, uh, Chairman of the Ocean and Blue Economy Office and Chairman of the Mission to Seafarers of Kenya, Mrs. Nancy Karikithu, Principal Secretary, State Department of Shipping and uh, Maritime, uh, various board chairmen who are here with us today, uh, various director generals of various institutions who are here with us, our guests from the Republic of Tanzania who have uh, honored this uh, occasion, uh, captains of the industry, uh, leadership and membership of the Association of Maritime Practitioners, distinguished mariners, ladies and gentlemen, uh, all protocol observed. Uh, good evening. It is indeed a great pleasure and honor for me to have been invited to speak to you on this historic event of the launching of the Association of Maritime Practitioners of Kenya. The timing for the formation and launch of your association is happening at the time when the government of Kenya and indeed the private sector has taken a keen interest on the matters of the blue economy. This year, we have witnessed the launch of the Lamu port, the Kenya Shipyards Limited, Kisumu port, and the key laying of the MV Uhuru by His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta. The revival of the Kenya National Shipping Line is ongoing, to name but a few. Indeed, as you have heard from the Principal Secretary, State Department of Shipping, 
the government has given very important and prominent on matters of maritime. And the PS herself is very committed on matters of maritime. And therefore, this is happening at the time when there's a maximum interest in this regard. When I checked your website, I noted six membership benefits listed on the membership application form. But one that captured my attention is number five, which says participate in nurturing the next generation of maritime professionals through interacting and supporting maritime students in the student branch of AMPK. Our future depends on the youth of today, and we must take all necessary steps to encourage more youth to take up seafaring careers and to train and mentor them. I'm very impressed today to see so many cadets in this room. These are the future leaders of the industry. There are more than 27, there are more than 27 professional associations in Kenya covering different professions such as architects, engineers, lawyers, and doctors, but none representing the maritime sector. While congratulating you for this initiative to fill this gap, it is my hope and expectation that the Association of Maritime Practitioners will work towards being affiliated and or accredited to the Kenya National Qualification Authority. Shipping and it is related industries and business sectors collectively make up a wonderful, vibrant, demanding, and truly component of the 21st century global community. Speaking for myself, I cannot think of any better arena in which to pursue a professional calling. And I hope that many of you in this room today feel the same, or at least will come to do so in the near future. We must take cognizance of the international nature of shipping and maritime and the need for collaboration between industry stakeholders in the development of common strategies, policies, standards, and practice to deal with the challenges affecting the maritime sector in Kenya. We need a well-trained and diverse workforce to make shipping work. This association, if well managed, with an opportunity to openly discuss how we can effectively face the emerging challenges in the maritime sector. Together, explore various opportunities within the sector concerning the blue economy and how we can collectively drive the maritime agenda for our country. Please join me to recognize and applaud the amount of work and effort and achievement that has been done in the blue economy in Kenya under the stewardship of General Retired Samson Ngapete, our gift guest. We are all trying to come to terms with the unprecedented challenges COVID-19 pandemic has caused. This has been a major disruption to all sectors and rained havoc to the global economy. The world has had to address issues of crew change, freight and vessel charter rates are at the highest level, and we are facing shortage of containers and disruption in the global supply chain. However, I expect that a forum such as yours will join stakeholders in sustaining conversation on maritime economy recovery under the unfortunate circumstances we find ourselves in. We need to be 
up to date with emerging issues such as maritime decarbonization, digitalization, autonomous ships, artificial intelligence, and the internet of things, and come up with innovative solution and build good foundation for ourselves and generations to come. In the near future, I expect to see the association holding annual conferences and publishing a newsletter at regular intervals and eventually coming up with a professional journal. Organization matters. I would encourage the leadership of this organization to develop clearly defined goals and objectives, keep a keen eye on membership welfare matters and develop an effective problem resolution mechanism. You may borrow lessons from such successful associations which have not only stood the test of time, but have also become key pillars of stakeholder engagements. In conclusion, I must express my appreciation to all those that have worked tirelessly to support the establishment and the launch of the Association of Maritime Practitioners of Kenya. And this event, including the president of the association, uh, Captain Suleiman, uh, who is here with us. Thank you. Your efforts have been recognized. And also, uh, Captain Tuali Pamis, who gave us a long history of how this dream started in the, in the 90s. And we are today gathered here to witness the final launch. As the American writer William Arthur Ward said, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expect the wind to change. The realist adjusts the sails. You have a wonderful future ahead of you, and I sincerely hope you can all make the most of your opportunities. I thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for those very enlightening remarks. And I would proudly wish to comment that Mr. Shiundu has been very generous to AMPK, generous with his time. He always finds time to answer questions, make very uh, valuable comments, and always ready to listen and to advise. So thank you so much uh, for that continued uh, connection to AMPK, and we look forward to much more closer relationship with you, sir. I take this opportunity now to welcome uh, Mr. Geoffrey Mwango, the board chairperson, Kenya Maritime Authority, to make his brief remarks. Karibu sana, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you so much. I think we you saw us talking low terms. Yeah, he wanted me to use his mic, mask mic because he had used it with his mask. But I said uh, we needed to sanitize because um, uh, Corona is still very real. So my apologies, Mr. President, for that, because if you do that to a president, then uh, it's not very kind. Organizers of this uh, meeting today, the association, much to the president with your team to putting up this uh, function. Our chief guest, General Matete, chairman of the Blue Economy Implementation Committee, chairman invited in this house, CEOs, industry players, cadets, and all of us. Good evening. 
Uh, it, it is my pleasure to be here um, this evening, basically to be with the team. I don't take it for granted. It's a very deep, great honor for my invited into this. Thank you so much. I say this because um, it's somebody say that um, not all who support your journey may understand your mission. So the journey which you have traveled as MPK, having been narrated by Captain uh, Amisi, it has been quite a journey you've traveled. Hearing from when we started, having the first master marina, having the first captain up to now, where we have quite a good number of cadets in the house. And it's a journey which this industry has really traveled. And for us to have a sitting today, this afternoon, then I think it has not been easy. It has been a big effort. And in this, then I would like to appreciate that it happened. Personally, as Geoffrey, I understand your mission. Of course, we, I support the journey, but I understand the mission of this association. And in this, then, um, a very small story from my house. I have a daughter who is 21 years old. And I've shared this story with quite a number of people. When she was in high school, she formed a maritime club. That was up to 2019 in Bunyore Girls. She formed a maritime club. So basically, leaving behind in 2019, there's a group which she left behind in that club. What it means is that I was one day invited into that school and I gave a story about the maritime industry. And in this then a few of them picked it up. She became the chair, she left the club behind. So when it comes to mentorship, then I think what we need to do is as an institution or as an association that we need to pick up. Where is it that we started the fire which we would want to keep on burning or to keep it alive? So I think we need to do school activities, maybe to inform or tell children or students from the earlier stages that there is a very good thing when it comes to um, working within this industry. As an institution came out of authority, we also understand the mission of what the CFRs go through, especially when it comes to training. And in this, then it has been mentioned by Mr. Mingo, who was saying the words of the DG, that uh, we have put a fund, a training fund as an institution, Kenya Matam Authority, for those who are not able to pay for their school fees. Yeah, so last year we put 50 million. This year we are looking at putting 200 million, basically to... So, 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 that, so that we don't, we don't deny opportunities and, um, for those who are not able to pay on their own. So I think that is a message which we can be able to carry through, basically to tell it to as many as we have. So long as they qualify to do it either at Bandari Matam Academy, they can as well do it in two. Those institutions which have been accredited by Kenya Matam Authority, we should be able to do in them. Seafarers, the work you do, it's quite challenging. And that is what I told my daughter because she kept on saying, this is what I wanted to do. And I said, if you join in and you do it right, of course there are challenges, but it's very lucrative. Yeah, so we need to say to as many people as possible, we don't take it for granted. Because if it were not for the seafarers, then we wouldn't be consuming as we would wish to. And in this, then I would like to ask the industry players, shipping lines, whoever we are in this maritime industry, let's try to give our support to the association, together to the industry. However small that is, remember there was a discussion here where we said, I think it was Captain Amis who said uh, the sea bath or the 
Uh, sea time is a problem. So I think we have uh, uh, shipping line representation in this room. Let's discuss this story back into our offices and see how best we can be able to accept as many of those trainees so that we can be able to have them finish their activities or their training the shortest time possible. Academia, we have um, two, we have other institutions here. I think academia, we have sat back for quite some time. We need to deep, uh, we need to dive deep into this industry. And as we do what we are teaching the students, basically we need to take into cognizance of um, technology and innovation. So it is a story we need to understand. Because when you look at many at times, when you look at what is being discussed, the academia is not, yeah, it is not as close as it's supposed to be. For example, for, for as we stand today here, then with the shortages of uh, containers, that's a big story to this industry. This is a big story to this country because the cost which is, is going to be caused by this shortage of containers, then the rates are going to go up, charges are going to increase, we'll have issues. So basically I think we need to understand as academia, we need to understand this. What is it that we can be able to showcase, bring together? And as a trained maritime economist, um, the journey you have traveled to form up up to today, I started it two years ago. There's an association for maritime economists, which I'm still coming up with. It has not been easy to call people to come together for a discussion. It's either we don't understand or we are too busy for that, but I appreciate the way you have traveled. I'm doing this because um, as I stand here, I represent Africa for the International, Marit uh, International Association for Maritime Economists, IAME. I'm a council member and I'm the only member for the African continent. So basically what it means that we still have an effort. We still have an effort to do. And in this then I would like to advise, I would like to uh, invite all the maritime people to be able to work together in this venture. When it comes into fruit, then I think um, our calculations and the understanding of the problems which uh, when uh, Suez closes the canal, then what are the effects? Uh, what are we suffering as a country? We are very far from that, but again, there's a lot of uh, suffer which we go through. So we need to make um, efforts in that. Lastly, um, the idea to come together as an industry, as it is being given by uh, Captain Anisi, very important. Let's try to come as close as possible. And if need be, then we need to form a team, like the KTB or uh, the yeah, KTB, the, the Kenya Tourist Board. They move out of this country to go pitch tents in Dubai to say what this is for Kenya. We need to have that kind of uh, arrangement where we could have a few people going out of this country, talking to ship owners to ask them to do one, two, three. Uh, so basically I think it is a, it's a welcome idea and uh, Mr. Omingo, I think uh, we need to pick it up as an assignment for us as Kenya Matam Authority, basically to see what is it that we can be able to do. We can uh, touch it up as with the PS office, the blue economy, we need to have, or we need to take a lead into this. Having said this, I would like to end my remarks to say thank you so much for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to speak on the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, board chairperson, Kenya Maritime Authority, Mr. Geoffrey Mongo. Uh, we're very encouraged uh, by what we, you have shared with us this evening. 
Asante sana. I think the students that are here are quite uh, encouraged to find that, that there is more funds. There will be more funds set aside to support their training and education. And uh, for those that are not here, please pass the message as duly requested by the chairman to those other aspiring maritime professionals to join up maritime causes and access the funds that have been set aside. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Geoffrey Mwango. I now have the pleasure uh, to invite uh, Captain Musa Hamza Mandia, who is a very special guest of ours this evening. He has taken his time to honor us uh, with his presence and participate in this event. He's the current board chairperson, Tanzania Shipping Agencies Corporation, TASAC. And without much further ado, Captain Musa Hamza Mandia, uh, Karib Sana, please take the podium. Um, chief guest, um, General Samson Montese, the chairperson of Blue Economy Implementation Committee, Executive Office of the President, sir. Uh, in terms of the industry, I know there are so many of you, so I wouldn't be able to mention by your names, one after the other. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's quite an honor for me to be here. And I want to thank the organizers of this occasion for extending that gesture of good neighborhood. I call it good neighborhood. We are traditionally one and the same people. We have borders with straight lines, which were determined by our colonial masters. But if you go through the borders, you find people of the same tribe and the same clan, you have an uncle on one side and an aunt on the other side. That tells you that we are one and the same people. Nevertheless, a lot has been said in this forum, which reflects how common our problems are. I must confess that I didn't prepare a speech for this uh, occasion, much as I've been, I've been introduced as a very special guest. My belief is that I am special only because we have one and the same problem, so to speak, within the region. What has been mentioned here leaves nothing unturned in as far as the maritime industry is concerned. The problems we have in Tanzania are very much the same that you have here in Kenya. Just to mention a few, one is that problem of developing the maritime uh, officers, be it navigators or engineers. They would attend courses, but once they're done with the courses, sea time becomes a challenge. It's exactly the same problem that we have in Tanzania. I was so impressed to hear of the Kenya National Shipping Line uh, under the guardian of Mr. Shundu. I don't know whether he still remembers me. The first time we met with Mr. Shundu, just to remind you, was way back in 1990. How many years is that? You are still with the African Marine in Mombasa, right? And I was sitting as an operations manager with the Tanzania uh, Railways Corporation Marine Department. That's when you visited my office. And I moved uh, to various uh, places. And one of them, I became an instructor at the Dar es Salaam Maritime Institute for 13 years. And that problem of sea time has been the same those years and it's still the same today. I must thank Her Excellency, the President of Tanzania, Madam Samia Salu, for having put me in the position of Chairman of the Tanzania Shipping Agencies Corporation, which is a counterpart of the Kenya Maritime Authority. 
ours is a bit different in the sense that we are a regulator and at the same time we are doing a bit of shipping business. It's just a move from what we were before when we had what was called uh, surface and maritime regulatory, surface and maritime transport regulatory authority, where when you mention of it by the name of Sumatra, the Tanzanians would only think about land transport. So with the move of having the shipping business revived, we thought that we would rather move the regulatory part of the Sumatra to the shipping industry. It's just a step towards establishing Tanzania Maritime Authority. So you can see already that we are also moving uh, step by step. Um, I was listening to Madam Permanent Secretary, Nancy Kerke, whom I happen to know for many years, we have worked also together uh, for some time. The idea of blue economy is articulated by the African Union, calls for this kind of a forum where you bring all people in the maritime fraternity together and have brainstorming and come up with ideas that are more dynamic today than it was 10 years ago. Having said this, I must take this opportunity to commend those who thought of establishing the uh, Association of Maritime Practitioners in Kenya, whereby you bring all disciplines within the maritime industry to be able to discuss comprehensively and come up with solutions that are doable under the current structure that you have in Kenya. I must say, this is an opportunity for us. And it is for this reason that I have come along with me with the Director General of the Tanzania Shipping Agencies Cooperation, so that we are also able to learn from you. We have heard a number of things that we were not aware of. But today, with the speeches that have been given here, we are living with the wealth of knowledge of whatever you people have thought of, because everything starts with a dream. It is your dream that have brought you to this level and it has brought us here together to be able to witness the inauguration of the Association of Maritime Practitioners in Kenya. I must take this opportunity to congratulate you for that. But mine this afternoon is not giving a speech but rather conveying greetings from the maritime fraternity in Tanzania and congratulating you for what you are doing already today. The spirit of regionalization cannot be overemphasized. Mr. Shiundu has been at IMO for almost 23 years, if I'm not mistaken, because soon after leaving my office, I was impressed to hear that you moved to the IMO from the African Marine. You've done quite a lot for us in the region. I must thank you for that. You actually visited DMI when I was head of the navigation department. We witnessed a lot of things that were happening from IMO under your assistance. Now, extending this gesture of good neighborhood and inviting us today goes in line with the spirit of regionalization as it is being advocated by the IMO. So thank you for doing that. And I want to promise you on behalf of the Maritime Fraternity in Tanzania, that we'll be ready to work with you wherever you need our assistance or comments, we're ready to help you. With these few remarks, I must thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Captain Mosa Mondia. It's been a, an honor today to finally meet you to put a face and a voice to the name. Uh, your name precedes you. I've heard so much about you before, and today is a very special day uh, to finally 
meet you and have the honor to be addressed by you. Thank you so much. We gladly receive uh, greetings from our brothers across the border, our good neighbors. The Maritime Fraternity of Kenya uh, is very much uh, appreciative of those greetings that you have relayed to us today. Uh, Asante Sana, what I would like uh, as well to uh, appreciate the presence of uh, Dr. Christian Adenya, who's here to represent the Vice Chancellor of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. And appreciate the presence again of a very important uh, senior fellow of the MPK, uh, engineer David Kariuki, whose efforts uh, to making this uh, a success has been very well uh, noted and appreciated uh, by Captain Hamisi. Karib Sana, uh, Chief Engineer David Kariuki, Captain Banafa, long standing senior marina, we appreciate your presence here as well. Um, yeah, I'll take this opportunity to make a few remarks on behalf of MPK. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll take the opportunity as well uh, to appreciate the presence of Captain Dev Mooley, who's here with us. Uh, he's the current uh, technical, uh, regional technical corporation uh, manager, IMO Gigiri in Nairobi. Um, he's a long standing marina and very well known in the maritime fraternity in this country and beyond. Karibu sana, Captain Muli. The guest of honor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'll make a very brief presentation on behalf of the Association of Maritime Practitioners of Kenya, just to situate ourselves, to know exactly what it is, what it intends to do, and what it has done already. The Association of Maritime Practitioners of Kenya is a professional association of merchant Navy officers. Uh, this constitutes of ship captains, nautical officers, chief marine engineers and marine engineering officers and affiliated shore-based maritime professionals. And this is quite a very big uh, cluster. It was registered on the 1st of October, 2019, uh, under the Societies Act of Kenya. This is a photo of the inaugural meeting held on the 25th of May, 2019 at the Mombasa Mission to Seafarers. And most of the people that are here that you can see on that photo, I'll be happy to inform you that are present here with us today. Objectives of the association include, among others, to advance the professional interest of merchant Navy officers and affiliated maritime practitioners in Kenya, to facilitate the exchange of information and ideas on pertinent industry affairs among the members of the association, and to avail a platform for engaging stakeholders in the maritime industry. Membership of the association is acquired through proven maritime and related qualifications in addition to industry experience. The defining qualification for merchant 
Navy officers is a certificate of competence, what is famously uh, called a COC, issued by a competent government agency. For non seagoing members, they are admitted on virtue of their maritime academic qualification and or relevant maritime industry. So you will find that the association is open to both seagoing and non seagoing maritime practitioners. Members enjoy, among others, the following benefits, formal acknowledgement of professional status, participating in nurturing the next generation, which is a key point that uh, was pointed out here by uh, Mr. Shiundu. Uh, networking with colleagues and prospective employers and customers, having the members' voice heard in public and private sectors of the maritime, uh, of the Kenyan maritime industry, a forum to share and learn through the association's technical forums, which we will see in a short while, and corporate members will get to enjoy representation in professional forums. And again, it provides a platform to devise solutions to challenges in the Kenyan maritime industry. And for the student, uh, our student uh, branch, our student members get to further enjoy the professional mentorship that is offered by senior members. Um, the technical committees are the key functional organs uh, which uh, towards achieving the stated objectives. So this, uh, the Technical Committee on Maritime Education and Training, uh, for example, would aim to promote and facilitate uh, capital development, uh, human capital development in the maritime and affiliated industries and disseminate knowledge to maritime professionals and stakeholders through an elaborate uh, knowledge management system. To this end, we are in a partnership with the Institute of Marine, Marine Engineers Imarest, Institute of Marine Engineering uh, uh, Science and Technology, Imarest of the UK. And again, uh, we are in partnership with the UK Nautical Institute, which is a global leading uh, professional body that tackles matters of the nautical industry across the globe. And it has uh, an observer status in the IMO. So we are already in partnership and uh, uh, in the process of forming uh, and coming up with the uh, projects and the programs for our members. So this offers a very important uh, forum for professional development uh, for our members. Um, the Technical Committee on uh, Marine uh, Maritime Safety, Security and, Envi and Environment aims uh, to provide a platform for mariners to engage in discussions leading to sound professional pronouncements on contemporary issues pertaining to maritime safety. Yeah, all right. Uh, apologies for that short uh, technical uh, challenge. Let's minimize this. Don't, don't play, Let, let's just use it. Okay, thank you. Um, the Maritime Law and Policy Technical Committee 
brings together MPK members possessing competence and or interest in maritime law and policy. And the MLPTC engages its members in keeping abreast of national and international legal and policy instruments that mod modulate the maritime industry. So all of this information is available on our website and each one of those technical committees engages in very specific area of the maritime industry. The Marine Engineering and Maritime Technology Technical Committee would focus on those areas of interest among others, uh, shipbuilding and repair, naval architecture, harbor and marine terminal engineering, marine energy technologies, and so on. And we have our members who are then uh, of that background who will be able to uh, build on their experience to tackle new challenges and provide suggestions and uh, or participate in forums that look into advancing uh, issues to do with marine engineering. The Technical Committee in Fisheries and, and Marine Sciences provides a platform for mariners to engage in discussions leading to sound professional pronouncements on contemporary issues of marine resources. And the areas of interest would include fishing vessel safety, illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, sustainable utilization of marine resources and marine resource value addition. So all of this information would be available on the website. And I would invite uh, the participants here to visit our website and spread the word so that uh, the work of MPK can be understood and known out there. The MPK Students Forum is quite active and a good number of our members are here in very uh, brilliant looking uniforms. And the F Students Forum is a platform for engagement and support of maritime students in their training and early career. The photo you see here is one of the events uh, uh, organized by MPK, where student members were uh, taken on a field tour to African Marine. I'm very sure Mr. Shundu would be very happy uh, to hear that. And they were taken through quite, this was a half day event, and they were taken through the docking process, the undocking process, and all the technical information was shared with them. And this is a team that of students that was drawn from Bandari Maritime Academy, uh, Technical University of Mombasa, uh, Jomo Kenyatta University, and I believe uh, the Kenyan Coast National Polytechnic as well. Um, again, this is another event where our head of secretariat and myself uh, took some students to one of the local ships, um, took them down to the engine, engine room to have a look and a feel and be uh, taken through what a ship's engine room looks like and all the machinery and equipments uh, that are in there. Again, these are photos of our members and the MPK has been conducting a webinar series uh, ever since its inception in 2019. Um, of recent, the most recent one uh, being uh, three that I would like to, to point out here today. Uh, one was held uh, tackling the, the topic of revitalizing merchant Navy training and quite senior mariners uh, are featured in the panel. Uh, Captain Onyango, uh, Chief Engineer Iregi, Captain Ali Abdile, Captain Dev Moli, who is here with us. And these were drawn from across the industry to try and tackle this. And the webinar, I'm happy to report, was well attended. And a report uh, on the outcome was put up and shared. Um, another recent uh, webinar in our webinar series was the grounding and refloating of MV Ever Given the global catastrophic event that more or less uh, uh, paralyzed uh, global trade. And this was tackled ably by Captain Moses Modama, who's here with us, Mr. John Omingo, who handled the commercial aspects, Major a retired Maru, board member of Bandari Maritime Academy, again, retired legal officer of the Kenya Navy, and well attended, and I would, Happy to say uh, it drew uh, quite good attendance and, and positive feedback from the industry. And very recent this week, on Thursday, the 4th of November, we had quite a captivating webinar on tackling the question of global warming, reflections on the future role of LNG in energy and maritime industry. This was a very special one. Um, 
being a cross-cutting topic and presented by an international expert, LNG expert, with a very wide experience uh, in the LNG uh, uh, industry across the world, uh, in the UK and presently in Qatar. And I'm happy to report that uh, it was quite captivating and uh, an eye opener for MPK to look into some of these uh, not very traditional uh, sectors of the maritime uh, industry and to bring on board experts who can then help us to understand them and, and, as, and uh, add value uh, to the national discourse when it comes to uh, development of the maritime industry. I'm happy again to point out that uh, Captain Faisal Saad Faisal, who was the panelist for this uh, webinar, is a member of MPK. So he's one of our own and quite an able and uh, an international uh, expert who ably tackled the topic. We have had numerous uh, visits to stakeholders in the industry. Uh, these are officials, the, the Council of MPK, uh, paying a visit to African Marine as well, Alba Petroleum. Uh, again, members of the Council paying a visit to the CEO, Lamu Shipping, who I can say proudly, uh, owing to his humility, failed to point out that Lamu Shipping has presently, as we speak, two female cadets on board. And Captain Hamisi, CEO Lamo Shipping, uh, I know uh, being a very uh, man of humility would, would not want me to blow or say anything about it here. But again, it is credit, the industry is taking notice and we appreciate. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Um, this was a courtesy call to the Tanzanian uh, consulate in Mombasa. And uh, uh, part of the reason for that visit was a few uh, challenges which were being experienced by Kenyan seafarers in some ports, uh, neighboring ports. And I'm happy to say that uh, uh, those few challenges were ably addressed. And we organized a visit to the consulate of Tanzania and they expressed some of our concerns and they were listened to and addressed timely. Uh, I think that again, owes much to the good neighborliness that we enjoy. Uh, our motto is world-class maritime professionals for a world-class maritime nation. And I thank you so much. I'll end with uh, introducing members of the executive committee, uh, the council of MPK. Uh, Myself being the president and Mr. Oliver Maina, who's currently working uh, in the Kenya Coast Guard Service, who unfortunately is not here with us. Chief Marine Engineer Charles Regi is here. He's the Vice President Engineering. And uh, Mr. Talib Ibrahim is the Head of Secretariat. He's here with us uh, over there. Um, Dorothy Mose of Kenya Maritime Authority is our treasurer. He could not, she could not make it uh, here this evening. And lastly, uh, but not least, is uh, Miss Amina Morinda. She is a maritime professional working in Marine Operations Kenya Ports Authority. Uh, I, over there, the lady that has made everything happen. So thank you so much. And I take this opportunity to thank you for coming and and now distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to invite our chief guest, our guest of honor, general retired. Samson Motete, the chairperson Blue Economy, National Blue Economy Implementation Committee in the executive office of the president. He is a man that needs very little introduction. <laughs> um, his work is felt, is seen. He's a man of very long and sterling reputation and a man of action. And I would proudly say that a man that I've 
had the opportunity to interact with and be inspired by and for many years and many others would say the same in this room. Um, please help me to welcome our guest of honor to the podium. And I would ask us to stand and invite all of us, our guest of honor to take the podium. Please be seated. Captain uh, Suleiman Bakari, President of MPK, Brigadier Naisho Lonena, the DG of the Coast Guard. I notice nobody wants to talk about you. <laughs> Captain Musa Hamza Mandia, Chair of the Tanzanian Shipping Agencies Corporation, Karibu Sana. Professor Layla Abu Bakr, the VC Tum. And uh, Dr. Adenya of JQAT, the MD of KPA, ably represented today by Captain Mudama, the chairs of uh, first KMA, thank you for your kind words. My response to you is just one, not enough. The chair of uh, Kenya National Shipping Line, my friend Juvenal Shiundu, the chair of Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute, Honorable John Safari Mumba, the chair of Bandari Maritime Academy, Professor Kinan. I think I'll remove this. Captains of Industry, Lillian Ambetsa, the cadet student who is here today with us and uh, a member of the AMPK. I'm very pleased this afternoon to join you in this official launch of the Association of Maritime Practitioners in Kenya. Sailors Ahoy. Thank you. The maritime sector features prominently in Kenya's national development agenda as captured under the national long-term development blueprint. Indeed, the third medium term of Vision 2030 provides specific government policies, programs, and projects in the maritime and related industries. As the public and private maritime sector stakeholders endeavor to achieve their stated objectives, the crucial role of human capital cannot be overemphasized. Qualified and competent maritime professionals are a key driver to our collective national ambition to build a thriving blue economy that will be at par with other prosperous maritime nations. The nature of maritime and rested industry under the blue economy umbrella, such as shipping, ports, ship construction and repair, fisheries, marine tourism, offshore and gas, among others, entail extensive governance through national and international regulations and global industry standards. Accordingly, these maritime and related industries require a qualified and competent pool of professionals. It is an established practice in most developed nations with prosperous maritime sectors across the world to have a robust maritime professional organization 
fully engaged alongside other stakeholders in the, in the national pursuit to develop their respective maritime sectors. Such robust maritime professional organizations featuring ships, captains, nautical officers, marine engineers, and offshore-based maritime professionals can be seen in countries like the UK, Singapore, Philippines, India, South Africa, Nigeria, and Ghana, among many others. The Association of Maritime Practitioners of Kenya, following the path of the best in the industry practices established, established in successful nations will therefore play an important role in Kenya's maritime industry. Among the key areas of concern where the Association of Maritime Practitioners will be instrumental is the production of qualified maritime professionals in support of our maritime education and training institutions. Maritime professionals are vital in the development and delivery of maritime training in compliance with the STCW convention and other mandatory regulations that are in place. Equally important, the association will be essential in ensuring that maritime professionals uphold national and international professional ethics and best practice in the industry. This will establish Kenyan maritime professionals as credible brand in the global maritime market, hence help to create employment opportunities for Kenyans abroad while attracting maritime investment here at home. Ladies and gentlemen, I call upon all members of the association to remain loyal to the organization and wish you all the best in achieving the stated objectives and in playing your role alongside other stakeholders in the development of the maritime industry in this country. Before I leave, I must comment on one or two things that have been said here before. And I want to echo what uh, Captain Hamis said. As I walked into this uh, venue this afternoon, I saw the young cadets lined, looking very smart. And uh, memories for me went back. And other memories that came to mind today was the fact that the organizations that are presented here at one time used to work very, very closely together. And I remember as a young cadet myself, going on board ships, piloting them in and out of the port of Mombasa under the KPA captains. Unfortunately, that training was stopped and many other things that we used to do together was stopped. People became very suspicious of others. People thought by having a military cadet understanding Captain Suleiman, when they want to go on strike, the military will take over. Those kind of suspicions, very mundane and you know, we must get out of that. We must work closely together. And I believe this association will help in making sure 
that those kind of things are sorted out. The other thing that I want to say is that yes, we have a problem in addressing the needs for our cadets to, to train on board vessels. But I like Lamu Shipping has offered to train some of those cadets and there are plans. And uh, we believe that uh, if and when the Kenya National Shipping Line comes to be, that will be one of the solutions that will be handled there. But I want to put this challenge across again, that, you know, when people talk about shipping, they always look at others. It is time that us here, even at the association level, own some of these assets. That is the only way that we will open up the blue economy. We can start small and grow. There are ships being constructed in this country. And I'm glad to see Seco is here, African Marine is here. And very soon we will have the Kenya shipyards. All those will help address the blue economy if they get orders to build more ships and those ships to be used and owned by Kenyans. This challenge I must put across to you. Let me, I know we have a, a rather long program and we still have to splice the main breast. So let me not bore you with the too much, but to just say that looking forward, if everything goes as planned, we will have a very vibrant blue economy sector growing in this country. And I look forward to seeing that happen, God willing. I will stop there and say that it is now my most pleasant duty to declare the Association of Maritime Practitioners of Kenya officially launched. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, our guest of honor, uh, General Retired uh, uh, Samson Motete. Thank you, sir. Guest, please. We'll now uh, go to the very last bits of the program and be to present a few gifts. Our guests have addressed us this afternoon. So this is a small a gift and for you to remember us and uh, to put in your office perhaps so that next time when we come, we are not strangers in your office, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see it as more stars than I have, so. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll ask our guest of honor to present a few gifts uh, to our other guests that have addressed us. Okay. I would call upon uh, the board chair, Captain of TASAC, Captain Mossa, please.
Right, please uh, just take it and seat. And next, I would like to call the chairman, Kenya Maritime Authority, Mr. Geoffrey Mongo. <laughs> I'll now call upon the last one for the chair and then for the guest of honor and then we'll give him uh, a break to go and sit and rest. The chair Kenya National Shipping Line, uh, Mr. Shiundu, please. Thank you so much, sir. I think we can give you a break. Okay, sir. I'll now call uh, the Honorable John S. Mumba, Chairperson, Chairperson Kemfrey, to help us present uh, some gifts to um, other uh, speakers of the day. Honorable, sir. Karibu. And I'll call upon the DG a representative of the DG Kenya Maritime Authority, Mr. Omengo, please. Do we, do we have uh, Mr. Omengo? He's not here with us. Okay, then. Um, any senior uh, managers of KMA to do it? Oh, Captain Ojoi, Karib Sana, the Director of Safety, Kenya Maritime Authority, who's here to receive the gift on behalf of the DG Kenya Maritime Authority. Um, I'll call upon the DG uh, Kenya Coast Guard Service, uh, Brigadier Lonena, to please receive a gift from uh, Honorable John S. Mumba. Thank you so much, sir. I'll now call upon uh, Captain Mosa Itiso. Is he still here with us? Okay. I'll call uh, engineer David Kariuki. Okay, I think I'm told they've taken a health break. Uh, to help us give uh, the rest of the gifts, I'll call upon Captain Hamisi to help us give some gifts to our other guests. Uh, Captain Moses Modama on behalf of the MD Kenya Ports Authority. Again, I'll call uh, Captain Abdile to the podium, president of the Marine Pilots Association of Kenya. Um, I'll call upon uh, 
Professor Laila Abubakar, who's here to represent Maritime Education and Training Institutes, all the METIs of Kenya. <laughs> and last but not least, I'd like to call upon Captain uh, Kaim Abdul Kayenge, the DG Tasak, to present a gift uh, to Captain Hamisi. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the very end of the program and I'll call upon the guest of honor uh, to please uh, uh, join us as we unveil. Please, yes. And I'd like to ask all of you to be patient. We have a photo session after the unveiling and it is an elaborate program where each one of us will get, uh, the different groups will get to take a photo with our guest of honor. Thank you so much. Um, Chairman, Captain Musa Mandia, Chairman uh, Geoffrey Mwango, Chair, uh, Mr. Shiundu, if you can join us, please. About six of us in the corner. Six in this side, and the other side. This side, just the one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just a one. Count for us, one, two, three. Okay, on a count of three, one, two, three. <laughs> Association of Maritime for Assessioners has officially been launched. Please step aside, about two meters away. Okay. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll now uh, embark on the last bit of the program, which is uh, a photo session with our guest of honor. And we'll be guided by you. If you could take the other mic, please. What is the first group? Where's the photos? It's from here? Yeah. It's here, yes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sir? Yes, sir. Uh, the first group uh, shall include the guest of honor, the president of the association and head of public institutions, 
and uh, that will include also the public uh, universities, which are also public institutions. So we have the guest of honor, the president of the association, and heads of public institutions and their representatives. Uh, please uh, join the guest of honor and the president of the Association of Maritime Practitioners for a photo. The next uh, group will be the guest of honor, the president of the association, and uh, foreign invited uh, dignitaries. Uh, please welcome uh, to the podium. All our foreign invited uh, dignitaries, please, please welcome to the forum. The next photo uh, shall uh, the next photo shall be specifically uh, for METIs, that is maritime education and training institutions, which form the for the very foundation of the training of maritime practitioners of the present and the future, and uh, therefore we call upon the heads of METIs, the maritime education and training institutions to join the guests of honor and the president of the association to take a photo for maritime education and training. Uh, that includes Bandari Maritime Academy, Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, Technical University of Mombasa, and any other maritime training center that is represented here today. Uh, the next photo shall be the guest of honor, president of the association and private sector organizations in the maritime industry. Welcome to the podium. Uh, all shipping lines and rep their representatives to join the president and the guest of honor, the president of the session and the guest of honor for the photo. Uh, the next uh, photo shall be the guest of honor, the president of the association, and the, the council of the Association of Maritime uh, Practitioners. Thank you. 
Uh, next to join uh, the president of the association and the guest of honor will be the fellows of the Association of Maritime uh, Practitioners and the Marine Pilots. Also to join the marine pilots are all master mariners who are here present today from Kenya and from Tanzania. Also to join the group that is already uh, taking photos, uh, members of the MPK to join uh, the fellows of MPK and Master Mariners for photo. All members of MPK to join the podium for the photo. All members of MPK to join, excluding students. Students will have their photos. Members. Now the photos that are to go next are MPK student members with the guest of honor and president of uh, the association. Uh, all students. Uh, the board chairperson of uh, Bandari Maritime Academy is asked to join the photo uh, with uh, students. The last photo will be the Association of Maritime Practitioners with Womesa. The last photo is Womesa. The last photo is with Womesa. Last photo is with Womesa. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I now return the function to the president of MPK. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I, I take this opportunity to invite you to proceed out of the hall. There is a cocktail menu. You're invited uh, to proceed, but members of uh, uh, members of the three reserved tables, please take your seats. You'll be served where you are. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the part where MPK invites you to proceed out of the hall and enjoy the cocktail menu that is served there. Small cocktail. Yes. Uh, which media house? Uh, which media house? Uh, okay. So let, let me just get things in place and then we we'll, we'll, yes. Yeah, sure. Salib. Where's Salib? Get members of this table to sit in this. Excuse me, sir. You will sit and be served a small cocktail menu here. You don't go out to be served. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, you may proceed. Out of the hall, there's a cocktail menu being served. Please proceed and enjoy what is being served. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Captain. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Madam Amina, Madam Amina, Organizing Secretary, Madam Amina. Salim, let's get things going. Yes, sir. Hello. Good to see you again. I think we met for the audit. Yeah, we have for audit. Good to see you, Karib San. There's a menu that's being served. Please stay and enjoy a bit of it. We will be very happy to eat a little. These guys are very busy. They will, they will move. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you uh, to proceed out of the hall. There's a cocktail menu being served. Please proceed and enjoy the menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were a bit worried with the technical bit, but it's, it's gone very well. 
Professor, you'll be served here. So don't need to go and figure it. You'll be served here. This is yours. Discussion that is going on now mm. is to have it done in London. The election, yeah? yes, we bring the election to London. It's quite an advanced state of Click of all rich salaries. Let's get your kettle. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, you're invited to enjoy the cocktail menu being served. Thank you. 
Ya tiene como que te dimos, que era la oreja si quieres, te cuesta la. No, 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 no,
watu shati kwa watu kwa lati kama watu wakini Masikiangu mimi mwenye rafiki Saini na jama uwa na kutu jamaika Kiu watu ya watu ya watu Kiu sina nilanda kwa mwenye Kuliba kama uwe Enda kwa Kukukuni MFC Christo Hapu tumesigia kwa hapu Kuna MFC application form Kujiazo Hapu watati na kujia kwa Kujiazo ya kujia na komputa Hapu kwa nje kujia kwa Kujiazo ya kujia kwa Hapu kujia kwa Manataka iyo MFC application form Kujia kwa hima Kilo wei ndo kumwa mpaka kujia Kwa mwenye leo Hawa hawa Kwa kani mbate na 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 Kw